Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I saw this story pop up on my Facebook feed because it happened in Michigan. And uh, right now, car dealers can sell everything and anything they get on their lots. And as a result of that, uh, it gets trickier buying a car because they want more money. And occasionally, they want you to jump through some more hoops than normal. So this is a story from WXYZ TV, the ABC affiliate out of Detroit. Headline, man stunned when GM dealer says, pay for Yukon weeks before possession or lose it. Pay for it weeks before possession or lose it. Livingston County family eagerly anticipating a brand new GMC Yukon uh, went on the internet to tell their story about how they got an unexpected phone call from the dealership. They ordered a new vehicle. The vehicle has not arrived yet, but the dealership wants them to pay cash or get a loan, but pay for it entirely before taking possession of it. That's the man wrote on Facebook, adding that the dealership was threatening to sell the vehicle to someone else if he didn't do that. So he's put money down, signed a purchase agreement, and they've said, well, technically, if you want that car, you got to pay for the whole thing right now. Okay. So the man said he'd already been waiting months after placing a $500 deposit with a dealership, which is in Davison, Michigan. The man said he tried to show proof of funds that he's got the money. They said that doesn't matter. He said he's given until February 28th to complete the purchase on paper, which would also include putting insurance on the vehicle and possibly making payments. That is before he took delivery. Now, this is an interesting thing because the man says that the vehicle's identification number, the VIN, was available which means the Yukon has been built. He also posted the application for the title and registration form that had been filled out by the dealer and signed by their finance manager with a typed delivery date of 2-21-22. So the vehicle has not been delivered yet. It's a little bit late, but the dealership has said, we understand you put money down. We understand we have a signed contract. We want the rest of that money now, even though you don't have the car yet. Oh, and by the way, we might want, we might want to put insurance in that car. And there's a problem with that. Right there, that is a problem. Call up your insurance agent and ask them, assuming you have one, can I insure something I haven't taken possession of yet? See what they say. Uh, So Channel 7 Action News reached out to dealership and spoke to a man there uh, who on their website is listed as general manager. He said, this is about keeping the lights on, paying his employees and managing low supply with high demand. He wanted to make it clear that the customer still has not completed the purchase of the Yukon, which is expected to arrive on March 10th. So he's saying, look, number one, it's money. But number two, the purchase isn't done yet because he hasn't completed the purchase. The question is, at what point is the purchase complete? Because I assure you, 31 years of practicing law, I have seen people before who signed a purchase agreement, put money down, and then said, I changed my mind. Dealership says, you can't. You're bound by that agreement. Agreements don't bind one side, not the other. It's not how contracts work. So you have to ask yourself, uh, who is bound by this contract? So when Channel 7 Action News asked why the $500 deposit was not enough to hold the vehicle for the man until it actually arrives and he can see it before he completes the purchase, the man said the deposit does not mean that the vehicle is guaranteed to a particular person. So you could be putting $500 down, but the car can go to anybody following that logic. And I'm, I'm just, <laughs> he said the deposit does not mean that the vehicle is guaranteed to a particular person. He said his dealership gets one new vehicle from GM when they sell one. He said it's called turn and earn. So even if a vehicle hasn't been delivered to a customer, it's delivered on paper. Now, here's the problem. At what point do they tell General Motors a vehicle has been delivered? Can they actually tell GM, we just delivered the vehicle that you haven't delivered to us yet? That doesn't even make any sense. But what if someone purchases and insures a vehicle before taking possession and that the vehicle falls off a truck or is damaged somehow or destroyed? The manager said the dealer would fix the damage because it's their responsibility. (laughs) Well, if it's their responsibility, why would you ask the consumer to put insurance on it? So... The uh, dealership does admit that they have an obligation to deliver a vehicle in new condition and says that if they couldn't, they would unwind the transaction. And that, of course, leads you to the question, and why would the consumer insure the vehicle? So some people on social media found the process surprising. Others even questioned the legality of it. But the manager says the process is legal 
and allowed by General Motors. Now that statement, it's legal and allowed by General Motors, contains two subparts. The second subpart is that it is allowed by General Motors. That may or may not be true, I don't know. I'm not General Motors, and if I called them and asked them, I doubt they'd tell me. The question is, is this legal? Is this legal? We'll get back to that. A manager at another GM dealership who wanted to remain anonymous for obvious reasons said a vehicle purchase is not consummated unless the customer can actually drive it off the lot or take physical possession of it. And it's the physical possession part. The control of the vehicle transfers from the seller to the buyer when they hand over the keys and go, there, it's yours. Take it. So you could, you could have it flat bettered away. You could drive it away. Whatever. Meanwhile, the manager said after several conversations with a customer who wants to purchase the Yukon, he told him he'd make an exception for him so he would not have to pay in advance. He'd make an exception for him. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like you keep using that word, I don't think you know what it means. It doesn't mean what you think it does. Uh, an exception implies that it's out of the ordinary to do it this way, when in reality, we know that that's how a typical transaction goes. Someone buys the car, they get the car. And to say, oh, we're going to make an exception now, and, and we'll say that you only buy the car when you get the car. No, that's how it's supposed to work. The exception is when you tell them to pay for it well in advance of even seeing it. Uh, meanwhile, Channel 7 says if a person has a complaint about a business operating in the state, spokesperson for the Michigan Attorney General says they can file an online complaint with their office. So there's a couple things going on here. And interestingly enough, uh, the man says that the vehicle identification number is available. Now, I don't know if the VIN is included in the purchase agreement or not. That's one issue. But believe it or not, the Uniform Commercial Code, which governs the sale of goods in Michigan and all other states, does say that you can sign a contract. And as long as it's uh, identifiable, that the goods, you know, the goods are identifiable, the contract is binding uh, with respect to those goods. Now, here's the deal. If the guy signs a contract and has got the VIN in there, the dealership is completely wrong on this. Okay, but if the VIN's not in there, then the question becomes when he got the information regarding the VIN and it's connected to that sales agreement, does that then lock it up? And I'd have to see all the different documents and figure out how that works. But here's a better question for you. And we're going to get into this uh, a little bit of a, of a nuance. But most states, including Michigan, ask car dealers to keep a thing that's been nicknamed a police book, a police book. I've mentioned it a couple times before. And a police book is a register. And by the way, they can be done on computers now, so it's not necessarily a, a book like it was in the old days. But I actually know car dealers who use a police book, and it's actually like a ledger. It's like a hardcover ledger. You open it up, and it's got sheets of paper in it. And the police book is a record of every car in the inventory of the dealership. So when a car gets delivered, it goes into inventory. When it gets sold, it goes out of inventory. And all that information is kept in the police book. So the police book would actually say that on January 1st, a car came in, let's just say a, a Yukon came in, and it came into our inventory. They would write into the police book, it arrived on this date, here's the VIN. When the car gets sold, it then gets indicated that this car has now left our inventory and on what date it left and what it got sold for. And as you can guess, this is specifically for the state primarily to keep track of taxes because the sales tax on a vehicle is substantial and all the cars sold across the state of Michigan adds up and the state wants their money. And a common problem in the old days with car dealerships that were having issues with finances would sometimes sell a vehicle and not pay the taxes right away because they had to make payroll or keep the lights on. So... Then they'd sell another vehicle, and then they'd report the first one sold. And so pretty soon they're doing like a reverse Ponzi scheme. And that was an issue. So years ago, states came up with this idea of a police book. It's an inventory. And so at any moment in time, an investigator from what they used to call the Bureau of Automotive Regulation, now called the Bureau of Regulatory Services, can come onto a dealership lot, find the manager, and go, I want to see your police book. And they've got to say, here's our police book. And... The person from the state should be able to walk the lot and see every car on the lot is in the police book if it's in that dealer's inventory. Obviously, customer cars wouldn't be there. Employee cars wouldn't be there. But any car that's in the inventory of the dealership is in the police book. Any car that is not in the police book should be gone and the sales taxes should be accounted for. 
So we have an issue here because this man claims it is perfectly legal for him to sell a car that has not entered his inventory yet. Now, I am an attorney, but I'm not advising anybody on the law. I would, however, suggest that if there's an attorney out there who represents a car dealer and handles their business transactions, you might want to sit down with your client and say, can you sell vehicles that are not in your inventory and not in your police book? Because if the car gets sold right now, back to the story on Channel 7, the car gets sold right now and it's not in the inventory, it would not be in the police book. So if the car got sold today, but the man takes possession two weeks from now, what do they put in the police book? Car arrived today, was sold two weeks ago, is already gone. There's a problem there. Oh, and by the way, when do taxes get paid on that car that wasn't delivered yet, but was already paid for? These are all issues. And so if I work for the Bureau of Regulatory Services in Michigan, I might be tempted to do some spot checks and some dealerships and go, wow, they're selling cars not in their possession. I wonder if they're doing anything else unusual with their paperwork, because that would be a problem. So I'm just letting you know this. I've actually inspected police books before. I have, as complicated as it gets, but I've done that before for lawsuits I've been involved in. So I know quite a bit about this. But the question is, what would the police book show? Because it's an inventory of cars in inventory, and the car is not in inventory yet. Can they sell a car not in inventory without causing issues with the police book? There's another problem, previously I alluded to it, and that is that the man does not have an insurable interest in this, I don't think. But again, contact your insurance agent and say, can I put insurance in a car that I don't have possession of yet, I haven't seen it yet, and it's still being like, delivered by General Motors? And they're going to say, no, you can't do that. Uh, it's their responsibility till they offload it at the dealership. And by the way, I have represented somebody who bought a car that was damaged in transit. And a window got busted out of it, and they did a bad cleanup job, and there's broken glass everywhere, including in the heater ducts. So that when the man turned on the defrosters for the first time, he got a piece of glass in his eye. Whose fault is that now? Dealership blamed the trucking company. Trucking company blamed Ford. Ford blamed everybody. We went to court, we blamed everybody too, but we got paid. So here's the thing. Does he have an insurable interest? Who knows? Does he, does he have a signed purchase agreement? It appears he does. <laughs> so they've said they'll make an exception for this man and let him wait until delivery to pay for his vehicle. Boy, is he lucky that they bent over backwards like that. So it's, it's a crazy case, but they've decided to this one time, just this one time, let the guy pay for it when he takes delivery. But yeah, it's a crazy story. Out of Michigan, Davison. Man stunned when GM dealer says pay for Yukon weeks before possession or lose it from WXYZ. That's Channel 7 out of Detroit. Kimberly Craig wrote it. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Two most important days of your life. The day you were born and the day you realize why.